thank you so much for attending my presentation about damage demons in Pokemon and first let's talk about low kicks. This bug really doesn't look like an offensive beast. 102 attack and 92 speed isn't great and bug is resisted by far too much to be strong. Game Freak thought of this and gave it a great ability. Tinted Lens. Tinted Lens doubles the power of all moves against resisted targets, basically dealing neutral damage. This is huge in large part because of first impression. The move is a 90 base power priority move that only works on the user's first turn on the field. Obviously an amazing option, but why is the synergy so strong? Low kicks is one of the best revenge killers around. Against Grass, Psychic, and Dark types, it can consistently pick up Okos before the opponent can even move. With any other Pokemon, you could just switch into one of your many bug resists, but low kick still chunks them for huge damage. For example, the common defensive pivot Tornado's theory can take upwards of 50%. Give that sucker a life orb and almost nothing in the game likes switching in. Low kicks doesn't seem that powerful, but against resisted mons, it's one of the best. Super quick addition, this synergy is also super good with knockoff and U-turn, especially the latter since you force other people out and you can get what feels like free momentum that still deals a lot of damage since it's tinted lens boosted and stab. It's time for my weekly foray into decent GSC Pokemon. Today's entry is Marowak, who saw its only solid OU viability in Gen 2 as an absurd wall breaker. Its stats are pretty bad, but that's not what matters. What we care about is the Thick Club. When helped by a Marowak, it doubles its attack, naturally putting it over 500. After getting a single Source Dance boost, it can start dishing out lethal damage with Earthquake or Rock Slide, absolutely tearing through nearly everything. But wait, you might be thinking. This seems like a perfect example of the Rampardos Theorem. It's too slow and too frail to actually use EQ, let alone and Source Dance. There's just too many special threats like Vaporeon and Suicune. Well, yes, but Marowak heavily benefits from team support. The most infamous is Baton Pass, which is actually legal in GSC. With the Jolteon or Smeargle, it can become very difficult to outspeed and bolt over weakened teams. It also loves spike support. At plus 2 attack, it has about a 50% chance to Oko Snorlax. After a single spike, it becomes guaranteed. There's other options too. Teammates meant to bait special attackers can give it stronger matchups. Running Rest and Heal Bell Mill Tank can keep Marowak alive, even after sustaining tons of damage. Even just more aggressive double switches are awesome, getting in with surprising consistency. It doesn't stack up in the modern gens, but when it was good, it was good. Despite a slow start, Maridon has become one of the most deadly attackers in VGC. I've mentioned this guy a lot in passing, but I think it's time we give it a good look. Maridon has an amazing 135 special attack, yes, but its power comes from the sheer amount of insane modifiers it possesses. Hadron Engine boosts its special attack by 1.33 times when Electric Terrain is up, which it sets automatically. Speaking of, Electric Terrain boosts its moves even further. Terra is another one, basically acting like adaptability. Slap on a choice specs, and there literally aren't consistent non-ground type switch-ins. Its stab move of choice is Electro Drift, a 100 base power move that deals 1.33 times damage on super effective hits. This might be the most worthless secondary effect of all time because, let's be honest, what flying type is taking it anyways? Maridon is immediately dangerous and threatens even specially bulky Pokemon with consistent Okos. Here's my favorite. Maridon can knock out Assault Vested Terra Fairy Raging Bolt, which is very solid on the special side with Volt Switch. Fucking Volt Switch. It really can be unstoppable. After trying to decide on just one choice, this final entry is going to be Early Gen Explosion, just the move as a whole. This 250 base power normal type move is a staple of gens 1 through 4 for a very simple reason. It cuts the target's defense stat by 50% while damage is being dealt. Why they did this nobody knows, but it created an absolute monster. Just having explosion or even the less powerful self destruct in your kit is a big deal. It might seem crazy, but even Gengar, who is its base 65 attack, gets great use out of this move. With zero investment and a negative nature, it can hit Blissey for over 75%, Celebi for over 50, and Zapdos for nearly its entire health bar in gen 3. Imagine this in some Something that isn't fucking Gengar and is clear what we're working with here. My favorite example, once again pulling from ADV, is Choice Band and Metagross consistently knocking out Skarmory in one hit. That's right, Skarmory. 140 Defense Skarmory. Steel type Skarmory. Arguably the best Pokemon in the tier Skarmory. The only way to consistently handle this Titan is Ghost types. Ironically, Gengar is actually one of the best anti boom ideas. As insane as it sounds, exploding isn't only for damage. Its pivoting capabilities are nice too. There's just too many Pokemon that can and do viably run it to talk about at length here. I'll link some videos to go over these more in depth down below. In conclusion, insane damage dealers aren't so one note. Of course, a lot of them are, like Hoopa, just having huge attacking stats, but there's a lot of depth that can sometimes be difficult to see. Thank you so much for watching.